In this video, we're showing you how to make one of my favorite changeables, the ooze. Hey, what's going on all my fellow bait chuckers out there? My name is Michael. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well and swell out there around your bait shops. Today we have an amazing video in store for you. One of my favorite changeable colors which is called the ooze. Now I want to be very upfront. This is not my color. I want to be very clear because I know people get very touchy about this in the fishing industry I've learned. This is not my color. I was introduced to this color by a friend of mine back, I want to say, around Christmas time. He sent me an Instagram reel by Hendrix Fishing Co. I believe they're out of New York. I believe Tyler is the name of the gentleman who's the creator of this color. And they did a color drop back then around Christmas time of this brand new color that I'm pretty sure they invented. And they called it the Ooze. It's an amazing color. It is like a green yellowish chartreuse, but then it turns pinkish purple when you hold it up to to the light. So I immediately, being new, reached out and asked them what the color recipe was and as you can imagine that did not get me very far. So finally after lots and lots of failed attempt over three gallons of Plastisol later we finally have something that I believe comes pretty darn close to the ooze and we're going to talk about it today. Okay so what exactly is the ooze? We should probably start here. So this is what the color is. You can see up close it looks like nothing more than just a brown almost a peanut butter and jelly style worm. It's a changeable it has purplish, but it has a brown on the outer edge. However, when you get it in the sunlight and you get the right angle, it has a very bright yellowish green banana slug look to it as well. But you can see it still passes all of the pink and purple hues through it. Now, this one here in the middle is the preferred recipe. I have two other recipes on either side that we'll get into later. But you can see here in the sunlight, you get that green chartreuse but that purple glow from the light that's being tossed through it. It also looks good in a multitude of styles of baits as well. You can see here inside of the Ned Craw, it looks fantastic. A lot of the small appendages turn pink. Green chartreuse, wherever it's thicker, it looks fantastic. If we rotate around, you can see the seven inch finesse worms just also throw off a ton of light and it looks fantastic in a seven inch finesse worm as well. Look at that. See here, it looks just nothing more than a dark kind of green chartreuse. But you bend it a little bit and that light passes through it and now look at it. Look at that changeable. You see this? Yeah. This is what we're working with here. This is good stuff. Oh yeah. Also here it is in the whip wad. You can see the whip wad looking fantastic as well. All the thin parts, you can see when that tail is going to whip back there, you're going to get all kinds of chartreuse and pink reflectivity as that tail whips around. Body's nice and thick, but you also got the cutouts where the hook slots are, which is going to bounce some pink light as well. Great look at the tails and how they change. I mean, again, the tail of the whip wad, always the star of the show when it comes to that bait. It just shows light so well. And the craws, of course, when that sun shines through, looks absolutely fantastic. Taking a look here, you can see that the five inch jerk bait also stunning. You know, there's not too many baits that this color doesn't look good in. It's just that transition from the chartreuse green to the pink is absolutely awesome. Look at that. Just, oof, you see it in the nose and in the tail. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's a great side shot of the bait right there. Look at that. Oof. And last up, but certainly not least, is the 4-inch Slick Swim. Again, looking absolutely fantastic. 
when it gets skinny those tails just glow you're always gonna have a pink glow flapping back and forth on the back of that tail there's a great look of that chartreuse coming through that dark chartreuse brown kind of shining through there simply rotate it around let light pass through and there is your pinkish purple Okay, so when I first started trying to figure out what this color combination was, I immediately started with the purple bases because I knew how hard purple was to work with, so I knew this had to be the base for the color. And let me tell you, a lot of combinations pretty much led to what I would call army green. Uh, you know that dark green that looks like it's painted on the side of all the army trucks with the little green army men? Yeah, all roads pretty much lead to that. <laughs> The good news out of those first couple batches though is that's how I discovered the violet grape and came across the morning dawn recipe. So that was pretty awesome. And I learned all about violet grape changeable and the way that that works from changing pink to purple. And then I proceeded to follow down that path because I said, well, here's the pink and the purple that I see in the bait. It's gotta be using MF changeable, right? No, it's not using MF changeable at all. And it wasn't until a few weeks later after that, I was sitting through and watching some old SDG custom lure craft videos. And I saw one of Adam's videos where he was doing a bait box shooting some crappie molds. And he comes across this new color that he hadn't tried either called Lure Works Chameleon. And this is a really cool pinkish purple to brown color shift. So I was watching Adam's video and I noticed that when he demolded everything, this one color looked like it looked like a laminate in the mold. It was pinkish purple with that brown on the top where the light wasn't passing through it. It was amazing. And no matter which way you turned it, it looked awesome. So I ordered myself some chameleon and I've gone through half the bottle already just trying to figure out this color. I knew we were onto something here once I started messing with this color right here. We had the grape and we had that brown and now we just needed to add that kind of green chartreuse. I thought let's, let's just dump some chartreuse in there right? Again no. If we went real heavy with the chartreuse, it, it pushed all the way over into, again, a weird, yucky diarrhea color. A lot of the different chartreuses I tried did just were not transparent enough. So after trying a bunch of different chartreuses with the chameleon and getting a bunch of mush, this is right about the time that Mixmaster J was starting to teach me all about ratios of color and how to balance things and not just to start, you know, dumping everything in. It's all about the ratio to get Get your changeables right and in addition to ratios it's all about getting colors that aren't going to migrate with each other over time you can put some colors in that look great today but give them 24 48 hours everything's going to bleed together and it's going to look like crap again and i'm sure a lot of you have learned that the hard way just as i have as well so the first formula that i came across that looked pretty close to what we were going for which i'm now actually calling the alternate formula, but that involved to only two colors, the Lureworks Chameleon as well as the Lureworks Chartreuse dye. Using the Chartreuse dye is important. We need something that's very translucent and again a little bit goes a long way with the dye because it is a dye and it is going to bleed and migrate into the color itself over time. If you want the exact recipe for the alternate formula I'm going to go ahead and list that down below in the description so make sure to check that out for all the color recipes along with links to many things that you see here in the video. Now the one issue I found as a major drawback to using the chartreuse dye in the alternate recipe is that I noticed by adding the yellow from the chartreuse it really took away a lot of the purple aspect of the chameleon and really turned it a little more pink so really what you end up with is like a chartreuse green to pink color change in the alternate recipe so this led me to believe that well okay we needed something that still had the chartreuse effects but had a little more blue in it as well and that's when I decided to try some green chartreuse and I finally landed on one that's going to give me all of the transparent properties that I need and that is the MF good old number 55 green chartreuse. This is the magic combination right here. Lureworks Chameleon MF's green chartreuse together make an amazing color changeable known as the ooze. 
So let's go ahead and throw that recipe right up on the screen right now. So the primary color is the chameleon dye. So for one cup of Plastisol, we are going to need 60 drops of the chameleon dye. And then on top of that, next up is MF's green chartreuse, the color that makes this all possible. And this is only going to be 10 drops. And the one piece to set the whole thing off is the flake. And we'll be using the 0 .040 gold holographic flake from Lureworks. It definitely looks like they use a medium holographic flake in their baits and I think it looks great here. So quarter teaspoon of gold holograph flake as well and that's it. That is your simple ooze recipe. Single color, one injector, that's all you need to make some amazing baits. So the molds we're going to be using today are two different molds. First up is the 5 inch Epic Hog, one of my favorite molds. You saw me shoot this in the last video. Absolutely love me some brush hogs when I'm out pitching and flipping. And because we're also pitching and flipping, I need some jig trailers. We're pouring up some 4 inch flapping Drax as well. If you haven't seen the flapping Drax before, fantastic mold, very similar to the Pit Boss awesome awesome mold the nice thing about both the flapping drax and the hogs is that they have bodies that go from thick to thin flat appendages so they should really show off the ooze colorway well i mean everything else has shown it fantastically so far so i think that these are going to look fantastic as well all right here we are with a fresh cup of plastisol right out of the microwave right where we need to be Fantastic. Okay, now, first up is the Lure Works Chameleon 60 Drops, 6-0. All right, let's get you nice and close there so you can see. So the chameleon's gonna kick in and this is gonna give us our brown in the center and our purple along the edges there and when it's translucent. See that there? Brown in the cup but purple when we pull the knife out okay so that's part one next up 10 drops of the MS green chartreuse all right that's it just 10 drops is all it's gonna take <laughs> and what you're gonna notice is that we still keep the majority of that purple it's changed just a little bit but now we have a slight tinge of green to the hot version of the plastisol can you see that there in the camera that slight green sheen to that surface area there and that's it now for some added pop we have to add the 0 .040 holographic flake. This is again also from Lureworks. Very bright, very holographic. Recipe calls for quarter teaspoon, so we put in four sixteenth teaspoons, the total one quarter. And now we will just mix to perfection here. And this is gonna give us the basis of our changeable color here the ooze and this is pretty much it as far as I can tell this right here pretty much matches the Instagram reel and this looks like exactly what it looks like when it's hot wait till you see it when it's cooled off oh yeah fresh out of the microwave fresh out of the vacuum chamber ready for injection Take a look at that. That's the ooze. See the green? The purple? Green chartreuse on the surface. 
purple on the knife. All right, let's get this injected. Now we are dealing with very hot plastic salt, so remember everybody, don't forget to glove up. Okay, here we go. The ooze in the four inch flapping Drax and the five inch Epic Hawk. Let's go. The Mondo 10 ounce injector should be able to handle both of these molds very easy. The Brush Hawk is actually quite deceiving. It looks like it takes a lot of plastic and it doesn't. Believe it or not, the flapping Drax, because of those thicker bodies, actually takes up a lot more plastic than the Brush Hawk mold does. You can see it's already starting to drink and we need to make sure to top off both of these molds because they do get thirsty. Here's what the changeable looks like as always on the end of the injector. You can see in the thick parts it's got that greenish chartreuse brown and in all these thin parts it's that pinkish purple. Fantastic. Okay and here is the injector sprue and you can see a nice thick piece like this. There's no light getting through it. You definitely see that green chartreuse brown. But if we come in here and spread this apart, you get all of that bright purple in there. Awesome, awesome stuff. Fantastic when the light shines through this stuff. It's really, really something special. I'm telling you, really something special. Okay, so first up is going to be the five inch hog mold. Okay, something to take note of here on the sprue. You can see in the center, we have that dark green happening here. That's green chartreuse. And then on the edges where it's thin, again, you have that pinkish purple coming through. These should turn out fantastic in the brush hogs. I can't wait to demold these. There we have it. Huh? Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Thin pink appendages. Thick green chartreuse body also throwing that color change around. Fantastic. I love it when the light passes through this. In some lights you really get kind of a peanut butter jelly. In others you get that banana slug yellow neon green in direct sunlight. That's beautiful stuff right there. Those tiny little appendages still trap all of that light. That holographic glitter in there throwing all kinds of colors. Looks fantastic. Here it is up against the light. You can see that pinkish purple fully comes through and just absolutely glows in the sunlight. All right, and there you have it. The epic hog in the ooze looking absolutely wonderful. All right, let's see what the flapping Drax looks like, huh? Okay, here we go. Four inch flapping Drax. Let's take a look at what these look like all on the same side. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Would you look at that? Now, you couldn't really ask for a better example than this right here. Look at that. Green chartreuse body, bright pinkish purple appendages. And I love how when the light passes through, the thinner it is, it looks pink but then the thicker it is, it looks purple. So it's almost like a three-way color change, actually. It's just, whew, that hologram flake also looks really, really good in there as well. Adds lots of nice texture. All the appendages just capturing light, trapping it in, making it reflect pink and green, pink and green. It's just constantly changing. That's the beauty of this ratio in particular. When you're in direct sunlight, the ratio is constantly changing. It's hard to define a particular line on the bait where the one color starts and the other color ends and begins. It all just blends and is constantly changing in the sunlight and it's just a fantastic ratio. 
the ooze fantastic color and there you go look at that purple and see what I meant you have pink in the appendages there but purple in the body where it gets thicker so you're really kind of getting two three colors out of it it's just a wonderful all-around color fantastic changeables one of my absolute favorite colors so far I hope you all have a lot of fun pouring this color it makes every bait look good look at this I mean just look at this how is that the same bait I, what and there you go the four inch flap and drax in the ooze and I tell you this flap and drax is quickly becoming one of my favorite pitching baits I've never used this style of bait before but so far the results are pretty good first few bites of the season I've gotten have been on this style of a trailer so excited to throw it more as the bite picks up on the Delta yeah fantastic colorway I tell you what let me know in the comments down below which mold from your collection are you going to use to shoot this first I don't care what brand it is throw it down in the comments section below I want to know what you're going to shoot first in the ooze look at that there you go look at that there's your two-tone solid color two-tone full I mean just absolutely unreal two colors who would have thought I mean who would have thought two colors gives us this amazing of a bait I, yeah that's the power of bait making definitely definitely better to pour your own That is my breakdown and version of The Ooze by Hendrix Fish & Co. And like I said, I think it pretty much looks good in any bait that you pour it in. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a 5-inch stick bait, a brush hog, a flap and draft, a uh, finesse worm, a 5-inch jerk bait, uh, whether it's a whip wad, it's a Ned Craw, or even if it's a slick swim. It looks fantastic in all of these different styles of baits really really love this color can't wait to put a lot of this to use out on the water i went to a bunch of trouble to try and recreate this color and i am glad i stuck through it and finally did and i'm happy i'm able to share it with all of you i hope to see a lot of the ooze baits out there in the world and remember if you enjoyed this video Now's a great time to smack that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, don't forget, I still got that special deal going with YouTube. Subscriptions are free all month long right here at Bait Chuckin'. That's right, so don't be afraid to click that subscribe button. Smack that bell for those live stream notifications because we do got the boat streams going now. Lots more content to come. Until next time, y'all know who it is. Your friend on this end, Michael, out here around these Delta Slews. Reminding you to keep on chucking. I'll get back with you. <laughs>